Hey guys, what do I mean by a pre pre buy? There's a lot of pre's in there. I'm talking about what to look for on your first visit to go look at an airplane before you decide to actually spend money. Kind of a quote unquote sniff test. What are some things that you can look for just to get an idea if this seller has been maintaining their airplane correctly? So let's break it up into three parts. What you can do before you call the seller, what to ask during that first phone call, and finally, number three, what to look for while you're looking at the airplane on their site. So I'm trying to save you some money before you even call a mechanic to schedule getting the airplane into a pre-buy. Step one, before you even pick up the phone, is search for the aircraft that is for sale on FlightAware and see if you can establish a usage pattern. You can see from my airplane here, I've been flying the heck out of it. It's being used regularly. If you go onto FlightAware and it says the airplane last flew three years ago, that's going to raise a flag. Also, these are cross-country machines. They're meant to travel long distances. I think, in my opinion, an autopilot is a necessity, especially when flying IFR. Little trip trick here, if you want to know if the autopilot is working, or at least at the time of their last flight, look at the tracks on FlightAware. From the map view on my airplane, you can see there's a dead straight path. That's because my autopilot was engaged. As well, here, the vertical path I climbed up and leveled off and the autopilot held altitude all throughout the flight. And you can tell this from looking at the FlightAware tracks. If you're new to the type, new to Cessna 310s, the Achilles heel of the model or the weak spot is the landing gear. The landing gear themselves, if properly maintained, are very robust and very strong but they must be rigged. There's a, about an eight to 10 hour procedure that is outlined in the maintenance manual on how to rig the gear properly. There are numerous gear collapses that happen every year. They're, we're writing off tons of planes and the insurance companies will not fix your airplane if your gear collapses because these aircraft are not worth enough. They'll write it off. It happens all the time. So when you pick up the phone and start quizzing the seller, the first thing to ask is when was the last time the gear were rigged as per the maintenance manual? If the seller says, oh, we just put it up on the jack and swung the gear, you don't need to do that, it's fine, then that's a big warning sign. Other 310 specific questions on this initial phone call. How many hours did you fly it last year? These are complicated airplanes. If they're a hangar queen, then you can expect some huge bills. If the seller says, I flew it 120 hours last year, I commute back and forth from X to Y, then that's a really good sign. Especially if that's substantiated by your uh, research on FlightAware. Also ask if they're actually taking it to a shop for the annual that has specific twin Cessna experience. There are numerous shops in the US that specialize in twin Cessnas. TAS Aviation in Ohio is the premier shop. The lead mechanic there, Tony Saxton, is one of the heads of the twin Cessna owners group and provides maintenance support. As well, I use Air Impressions in Waco, Texas. And there is a well-known shop at Addison in Texas, but I live in Houston, so that, that's kind of all I know, but I'm sure there's East Coast and West Coast shops that specialize in twin Cessnas. In fact, anybody watching this video, can you please comment below if you know of maintenance shops uh, in your state that specialize in twin Cessnas, if you can please comment in the comments. Um, with the city, state, and name of the maintenance shop that you use that has specific twin Cessna experience.
Okay, say you arrive on site to look at the 310 that's for sale. First of all, don't get caught up on cosmetics. I'd much rather have good avionics and a good maintenance pedigree than a brand new paint job and a brand new interior. You'll probably be able to already figure that out from your uh, viewing of the photos. It's the gear that is so important. A few things that you can look for, just generally see if you see signs of grease on all the um, gear rod ends and various fittings. Just does it look like it's been maintained? Also, if you look at this rib right here, it develops cracks over time. There's something called the side brace kit that is a highly desirable um, addition. It's just a doubler, steel doubler that's riveted on. You can budget about ten to fifteen thousand dollars, roughly, for that, mainly because of the labor. But again, just look for the obvious. Also, there's something called the torque tube, which is part of the gear transmission. If this torque tube looks really corroded and really pitted, I would worry. I'd really want that to be looked at during the pre-buy. These tend to fail, and they tend to fail like a can of uh, you know cinnamon rolls, the Pillsbury cinnamon rolls. They unroll in a spiral type, type crack. So there's a couple of things that you can just look for. And again, you know, you don't have to be a mechanic, just look at the obvious. Next, ask if you can look inside the nose compartment. There's a lot going on inside the nose compartment and we can gather a lot of information about uh, the maintenance of the aircraft from looking in here. Okay, the first thing you're gonna see in here on the co-pilot side in the nose is the heater. It's a combustion heater, burns avgas. I replaced the heater in my airplane that you see here with a new heater from Hartzell. Cost about $8,000 plus about another 1,500 bucks in installation costs. This is a furnace burning fuel right in front of your feet. Unless the aircraft that you go look at, unless the heater in that has just been overhauled or replaced, I would plan on at the bare minimum having somebody go through your heater with a fine tooth comb. Next, look for corrosion down under the heater here. In fact, in a minute, we'll take off the cover on the other side. These ribs tend to crack in the nose section here. You tend to get corrosion in here. Um, as you can see on my airplane, it's all been zinc chromated. And uh, I did have some cracks at the last annual. They repaired um, the ribs like you're looking at right here. This one wasn't cracked, but th this is, these are the kind of uh, members in a nose section that can develop cracks. The whole nose section is actually very flexible and uh, moves a little bit. And so you tend to get uh, you know issues in there with cracking. So see if you can see any obvious cracks. Look up top here, see if you see any signs of corrosion. Um, you get spray up here. There is normally a curtain that goes in here, but on my airplane, I've removed it, and a lot of owners have. If the curtain's still in there, then by all means, just try to kind of peek around and see if you find any corrosion hidden under the curtain where it's touching the skin. Climb into the cockpit and exercise the fuel selectors. They shouldn't be stiff. The fuel selectors, um, well, the handles are actually just connected to rods that connect to the fuel selectors, which are outboard of the engines under this inspection panel here. They cost about $1,000 to overhaul each, and uh, I guarantee you if they haven't been overhauled, they'll probably need to be overhauled, but it's not a deal stopper. But what happens if they need to be overhauled, they leak, and the fuel will go, it will drain overnight from the tip tank into the wing auxiliary tank, and when you open this filler cap on top, the fuel will gush out. Again, not a deal killer, just be aware of that. You should probably budget for that unless it's been done. Okay, now let's look at something that can get very, very expensive, and that's damaged engine beams. If you open up all four inspection panels, two on each engine, one on each side, like I'm doing here, you'll be able to see the engine beams. The engines actually sits on these aluminum beams. They bear the whole weight of the engine, 
And if they're damaged, they'll need to be either repaired or replaced and it can get very, very expensive. So here's the engine beam, I'm pointing to it. Just look at all the engine beams and see if you can see anything obviously wrong. Here's an example of a damaged engine beam uh, from an annual inspection that occurred a few years ago and it cost um, the owner dearly because he didn't have a pre-buy done. Finally, there's an AD on the trim tab hardware. There have been a couple fatal accidents with some fatalities due to separation of the hardware in here. Just the old hardware, rusty, falls apart, and this causes loss of control. So you should just verify that this airworthiness directive has been complied with. It's not particularly expensive. It's just a bit of hardware and an hour or two of labor, but I would just double check before you fly in any airplane that this airworthiness directive has been accomplished. So I hope that was helpful. Now for the end of the video, let's have a fireside chat. Let's have a heart to heart about buying a Cessna 310. I've given you kind of a small list of things to look for as part of this kind of quote unquote sniff test to kind of see if you even want to proceed into a pre-buy and spend more money. But what I want to just impress upon you as of the making of this video in 2023, most of the 310s out there are projects. There's just a lot of neglected airplanes that haven't been flying much. I hate to say it, but I would avoid them at all costs unless you really want to to do a complete gut job on one of these planes and, and make it your own, but you can easily spend six figures doing that. Just be patient and try to find an, a good airframe. Notice the word I just used, a good airframe. Engines are engines, avionics, paint, interior, all that can be changed. What can get really, really expensive is a bad airframe with corrosion and cracks and all sorts of issues and a landing gear system that needs to be rebuilt. It can just get very, very expensive really quickly. So I hope this helps. And um, if you are in the market for a 310 and you have further questions, just message me on YouTube and I'll be happy to give you any advice that I can. Thanks for watching.